Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're talking about uh, ponds and how to fish ponds and the strategy of ponds. So I did a video of uh, strategy, how to fish a, a pond, and it was like an acre, less than an acre, a quarter, uh, three quarters of an acre, and half an acre, even up to two acres, and a strategy and how to fish them and the best techniques to, to go through it. And I don't want to go through, uh, again, the whole video. If you want to go check it out, go check out the, uh, the video, uh, Pond Strategy. Uh, today we're just talking about bigger ponds and how do you how do you attack a bigger pond and how do you fish a bigger pond when i'm talking a bigger pond three acres four acres five acres anything big like that <clears throat> typically those ponds are, are are deeper and most of them you can't walk through or you can't walk around on on the bank so how do you fish those um it you know it does take a lot of time in most of the places you could at least from my experience is when i fish like big big ponds or big lakes um, you know, again, I don't have a boat, so I'm walking around. And, and how do I fish those, and, and where do I find bass? Again, majority of the bass are, are not going to be all over the pond, especially in, in a three-acre or four-acre lake. So, you know, you got to figure out where they're at. And, and I'll go back to the 80-20 rule. 80% uh, of the bass are in 20% of the water. So you have to find them. And how do you do that? Well, you could do one of two techniques. You could go out there and use a, a spinner bait, a bladed jig, um, a lipless crankbait, a, a crankbait, anything that you could work upon pretty quickly and you could cover as much of the, of the pond as you can. And then you can kind of figure out where they're at. That's one way of doing it. it it's more time consuming. Uh, it puts a lot of time in. Uh, finding out structure, what's on the bottom, uh, how deep it is. You know, you, got, you might find different pockets of the, of, of the pond or the lake. You know, typically when you get into that big of a lake, you know, you do have pockets. And, you know, again, you know bass are going to be in and out of those pockets. Uh, you can fish those. Um, but it, it is really, it makes it more difficult from the bank. So I'm going to give you my idea, my suggestion, and, and how, to, how to do it. So my first thing is, uh, the first time I, I, I see a pond, I see a lake, I, I know it's a big lake, three acres, four acres. I even fished one that was like 15 acres. And there was like a back channel that kind of went through there and I fished that back channel and then there was like a, a walkway you know I, I'm fishing that just because there's you know there's the, you know the, the pillars I guess going in and I know bass don't relate to that but you know I did have success in the back water but you know for me is I know they're in that main lake and I need to find them and I know I need to know what they're related to and I just have to know what's going on underneath the surface and again you can, you can spend a lot of time with one of those things, a crankbait, spinnerbait, bladed jig, and, and you could fish it, and you could bang it around the bottom and kind of figure it out. Or you could do what I would say, or I would suggest, and this is gonna be your, your, best, your best approach to it. I'm taking a Garmin, castable sonar, or a Deeper Pro. It's been a lot, it's been a couple years since I've actually posted a video on, on these. So you could use either one. And what I'm doing is, you know they're, they're pretty simple uh not going to go into uh not going to go into uh each one of them in depth but it basically is a castable sonar you cast it out there you have an app uh and you start bringing it in and it will pinpoint the, the bottom it'll give you the depths it'll give you the structure and it'll give you a fish and it'll you, you can set it up to ding and you know you see a you know fish will ding and here again and that's that's basically the gist of, of what it is for for these two but what i'm doing even before I make my first cast with any lure, I'm going into the pond and, and I'm using one of these. The, the deeper is a lot heavier. I, I have actually lost this twice and it broke off. Um, so luckily I just waited and you know the wind blew it up to shore and, and I was able to, uh, able to find it. Uh, this is actually a lot lighter. Either one will work, either one. All I'm trying to do is all I'm trying to figure out for the most part is where the, where the bass are, what the depths of the lake are, what's the structure underneath the water and that's all i'm looking for and it's you could actually map this stuff and you could get i think you could get like a membership or you could pay for it that you could actually map a whole pond and you know then what i'm doing is i go through the whole pond it's going to take me some time it's, it's definitely going to take some time i don't even cast a lure the first time i go out there i'm just throwing one of these out there and i'm I'm casting every single place that I could possibly cast on that lake. I'm going all the way out to the middle. And again, there's a, there's a place that's probably two and a half, three, three acre lake. And there's rocks. And there's rocks way offshore. And I never knew that by just casting. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm hitting something. Threw these out there. I mapped the whole thing out there. I came home. I go on my app. And, and I start to look at the depths and everything. And I said, oh my gosh, there's all this structure. And I know bass will relate to structure. 
I know it's concrete. I know that in the springtime that, you know, that the sun comes up and it'll heat that up. And that's a source of that water is going to be warmer in that area just because all of the big, I mean, those big, huge, huge stones. So that's what I'm really doing. Going through the pond, I, I map it all out and then I go home and then I kind of start to figure out. And then you could actually, you got, you can go back and kind of figure out where you get dings on this thing again especially so you got to know what time of the year it is and, and you have to know uh transition areas and and where they're going if they're you know obviously they're out in the depths in the winter time they're coming up to the spring they're coming up to shore they're spawning then the, you know, then they're going back offshore and then you know they're coming in in, in the in the fall so really I'm paying attention to transition areas any types of changes in in the bottom you know if I go from like 20 feet and then maybe I go up like two feet and I got a ledge and then I go up again. You know, that's some place that I'm probably going to focus on. And I'm going to throw maybe, you know, probably a jig out there or a swim jig, something I can get down to there. And uh, again, a lot of times you just see undulations of, of the bottom. And some of those, those, just a little bit of undulations in, in that bottom will hold bass. And it's just an area that they could, you know, again, attack bait fish. And I'm also looking for, if I get paths or like, you know, ways into pockets or, you know, alleyways or the way the, the, the ground is structured and maybe comes in and then it goes into the, goes into a pocket and it kind of opens up. Those are the things I'm looking for. And really that's, that's the key to it. I'm paying attention to the dings and the fish that, that I'm seeing. So these things are, are pretty interesting. Again, not to get much in depth with the, with the Garmin or the Deeper Pro, but you know, they are just picking up the diaphragm, the air in a diaphragm. Uh, that's how it works. That's how all sonars work. You're, you're picking up the air in a diaphragm of, of fish. And I'm keying on, on you know, you could, you could set it up two different ways. You can set up where it actually shows a fish or you can actually just shows where the lines are, the, the typical, um, typical sonar. And really what I'm paying attention to is probably the, the bigger fish or, or the, bigger, the bigger arches. And that's kind of where, what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the little small ones, those are probably the little bait fish and, and stuff like that. You know, again, that's, that's, I'm spending a lot of time doing this. I mean, again, it, it'll probably, a three acre of lake to do this, it, it's probably taking me a good four or five hours. And again, I'm, I'm making sure I hit every single point in that lake that I could possibly cast to with one of these things. And again, I'm paying attention to the dings that I'm getting the fish, locating the fish, but I'm all, what I'm really, 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 really more concerned about more than anything else is just, I want a map of that lake. I, I just want a map of that lake. I want to know the depths of the lake. I, I want to know what the structure is underneath the water. And once I have that, I could hone in on those things any time of the season. Again, I know in the summertime, they're going to be probably pushed off the shore. And again, unless you have lily pads or, you know, again, uh, you know, logs or, or trees that come down and you have some, uh, you know, uh, some other kind of stuff in there, you know, uh, you know, again, walkways and you have pillars, you know, again, those are areas that are going to hold bass uh, no matter what. But I'm ultimately just looking for what is underneath and, and, and how I'm going to attack. Again, next time I go out, I, I'm, I'm looking at that map I get home. I'm spending some time just going through the depths of it. I'm, I'm kind of mapping it, you know, okay, where did I get where did I get the most amount of bait fish? Again, I'm also looking for those small little ones. If I can find a, a group of bait fish and, and I know they're out deep, I know that the bass will be by the bait fish. So again, that's the other thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for the, the bigger arches or they you know, or they had the little picture of the, of the fish. I'm looking for the bigger ones, but I'm also looking for schools of bait fish and what are they relating to? Because if they're relating to something, 99% uh, of the times the bass will be by those bait fish. And, and that's what I'm, I'm looking for. Again, go home, review it know the depths and then you know whatever season that you're fishing in you just have to know hey it's early early spring i know they're not pushed up to the shore what do i need to look to? oh hey i got a piece of this lake that i could cast to and i know i could cast to because i'm casting these things out there and hey it's 25 feet deep or it's 15 feet deep and i have some structure under there again maybe you have some railroad ties maybe you have some concrete in there okay that's typically probably going to hold some bass okay i'm going to probably target that area i'm not going to go back the next time I go out, and I'm not just going to tie on a crankbait or a bladed jig or whatever, whatever you like to use, and I'm just not fishing that whole thing. There's no way I'm fishing a three acre or four acre or even higher five. The one I said is 15 acres that I, that I fish. I'm not fishing the whole 15 acres. There's no way I'm even going to make it around that in the time that I fish. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to key on the areas that I think that bass are in because I know what the depths are, I know the structure. And, and that's really what I'm looking for. Now, again, 
You might do this in the springtime. Then you say, hey, 4L, you know, I, 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 you know what's going on. Some summertime, I'm not having any luck. You know, I, I don't know what's going on. You know, it's a big lake. I'm, I'm walking around there. I'm spending hours upon hours. And, and by the time I get to the side, the other side of the lake, I spent two and a half hours and, you know, feeding time's done or minor feeding time's done. And, and you know, what do I do? You know what, I, you know what you do? You go back and you say, hey, it's summertime. It's hot. I, I, I need to find the bass. Take a day leave your tackle at home grab the rod throw a deeper pro on throw a garment on there and you go fish it just 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 go fish it go map it out again find out where the bass are and then you kind of go through that process all over again in the summertime again i know it takes time but it's benefit it will benefit you tremendously i mean tremendously by mapping it out even if you do it spring summer and fall You'll find out where the bass are. You'll find out where they're transitioning. And you do it for one season. The next season, you kind of have a general idea of the pond by using these, by fishing it, by catching bass, by using all that information. The next season, you probably don't have to throw these. I don't throw these anymore. I, I really don't. I, I, I mapped out a pond. I, I fished it. I, I threw them out again. I found bass. And hey, I'm good to go. I, I, I know what they're structured. I, I fished it the whole year. I kind of could relate to that year over year over year. And if I need to, and if I'm really struggling and I'm like, I don't know where these fish are, I'll tie this back on and, and I'm, I'll go back out and, and I'll try to find them. All right, so that's one technique. The other technique with these things are, I got a big, big pond and it's, it's huge. And I'm gonna go through the same process. What I'm gonna do is, first thing is first, map it out the first time. The second time I go out or the third time, and, and I don't wanna hone in and I just wanna kind of focus on this, this. This approach will take a little bit longer. Gonna tie on a Garmin or the deeper, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna use that same information I did the first time I mapped it. And I'm gonna go back to those same areas and I throw this out there. <sighs> throw that out there, coming back. I'm looking at my app, I'm looking at my app. I, hey, boom, 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 I'm getting dings, I'm getting dings. I get the, you know, I get the big arch or, or the fish. I'm good to go, hey, let's go. Now, what you can do is just reel that in, put that off to the side, grab your other rod, have a, whatever bait that you, that, that you like for that depth and go fish those fish and see if you could catch them. And I've done that also. I've done this in a pond. I casted it out there, this garment, I mapped it all back out. I did spend a whole morning on doing it. I kind of spent a little time just kind of going through it. Fish to fish to fish the next day is I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try this. I tossed it out there, bring it in. Oh, yeah. They were suspended. These bass were suspended. And a lot of times you'll get this way. You'll get them one day they're suspended, the next day they're on the bottom. The next day that they're moving in. So a lot of times, what you might want to do is you might want to cast that thing out there. You get the arch, you find the bat, you find the bass, and a lot of times they're suspended. You got 20 foot depths, 15 foot depths, and they might be at that 10 foot, 10 foot, right at the 10 foot. Hey, okay, what do I have that could go down 10 foot? And or I, let's say I use a bladed jig. That's what I, I use. Count that thing one, one thousand. I count it down to 10, and I slowly bring that in, and, and I'm working that in that 10 foot depth range, and boom, I'm catching bass. I'm like bam, 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 I'm slamming bass. That's the other approach. But first thing is what you need to do is you need to map the whole pond out, understand what's underneath there, understand the depths, understand um, all the structure. So do that. And if you really like using these things and, and, you, and you really, really, really like them, heck, grab a rod, go to flea market, go, go to Walmart, pick up, go to Timu and pick up yourself a really hefty uh, rod, seven foot rod, six foot rod, really heavy, heavy rod. Uh, grab yourself a, 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 a reel uh, you know, put on some some weight and some line to it. You know, even a 40 40 uh, pound uh, braid, even 60 pound braid, and cast that out there. Bring it in, watching the app, going through it, going through it. Oh, hey, boom. Okay, I'm yep. Now put that down. Grab your grab. You know, fish. You know, using this, using this, using. Hey, I found a pocket, or I found a school of bass. Okay, I found a school of bigger arches. All right, I'm gonna go there. I know the depth. And now I'm gonna work that depth, whatever I like to use, a spinner bait, a bladed jig, a crankbait, a lipless crankbait, whatever it is, you know, if they're on the bottom of the jig. And that's how you do it. That's how you fish a bigger pond. It takes more time, especially from the bank. It, it, it takes a lot more time, it, it's, but it could be definitely worth it because big ponds do have big bass in it. And so, you know what, stay focused, be patient, 
map them out, map out the ponds so you know the depths. If you're seriously about fishing a pond that's a bigger pond and you're walking through it, you need to find out these things. You need to know the depths, you need to know all these different areas. And again, when I'm going back the second time and I'm using this or a third time or later on, I'm not using this in eight, all the whole way. I'm gonna go back to the areas that I think bass are gonna be in based on that season. And then I'm gonna hone in, I'm throwing this thing out there. Oh, hey, hey, they're suspended. Or they're at the five foot. Or hey, they're all the way at the bottom. Okay, now grab my lure, whatever I'm gonna use, cast it out there, bring that in at that depth, boom, and you got them. If you go back, you know, 80, 80% 80 of the bass are in 20%, I mean, 20, 80% of the bass are in 20% of the water. If you go through that process and you can't find them, then that's when you start to use this across the whole other areas and then you'll find them, go pick them up and then you go in there and you crush it. I hope this helps. You know, again, it is a challenge. It's bigger ponds or, or, or means bigger bass. It's a lot more bass, but it does take a little bit more time just to understand. But if you stick with it and you stick with it for a whole season, you're guar I'm guaranteed you'll be more successful by using this approach. All right, I hope you liked, uh, I hope you liked the video. I hope it helps. Don't forget to hit the like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll catch you later.